Good evening and welcome to the Board of Selectmen's January 19th, 2017 meeting. Apologies for our late start this evening. Uh, we had some technical difficulties on our side, not on technology side. <laughs> so I'm going to get started and the first item on the agenda is the draft of the Board of Selectmen's report that will be included in the 2017 annual report. And thank you very much for pulling this together. It's much easier to review than to draft. Mm -hmm. So well, I much appreciate it. And I, I would also turn the thing for because I relied heavily on her minutes. So oh, it, it's great. really um, much easier to kind of compile the information and to see just all of the work that the selection has done in the course of the year. And I couldn't find anything that was omitted. <laughs> you know, I went back to see if there were things that um, potentially we needed to add, and there was nothing there. So, um, you know, other other than just a few little wordsmithing or preferences, I, you know, these are really great. Does anybody have any other comments? No, I think they're wonderful. I, I wrote to Greer yesterday. I just think they're amazing, and it's it's very gratifying to see. Uh, I mean, all that we has, did something absolutely <laughs> it's it's accomplished. Yes. yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And I just again want to congratulate you on the blue wave. That was yours from the very beginning. So oh, it's, it was a team effort. I know, but still they were wonderful to work great. with. It's a big accomplishment. Yep. Yes, I think I, I know that there, it was a very complex undertaking on a compressed timeline. Very compressed. Yes, yes, very. Right. Kudos to you. So would you like a motion subject to the... Right, so I think there's just, I think, um, under the 46 Springdale paragraph, I, I, I think, I think, based upon all of the editing, we, we may have duplicated effort. <laughs> so, so maybe we could com combine the, first, the two paragraphs. But sure. other, other than that, um, yes, I will take a motion. So moved. Mm -hmm. Second. All in favor? Aye. And again, thank you very much. Thank you. Very much. Beautiful. Thank you. Was that your car I saw here on Monday morning? I I know, I know, I know. It's it's amazing what that you finish it up and then you find things and you say, How could I not have Right? And then nevertheless I gave it to Mona to read and she found some bobs and does that I omitted, so yeah. Right. Definitely. I, I always say the hardest thing is writing it. The easy thing is reviewing it. Thank you both. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, next is the annual town warrant. I see it's grown since last time we went through it. We now have 32 warrant articles. I think I think last time it was 22? It was more than 22. 27? 27? But fewer, yes. All right. Um, tomorrow at 1, the warrant closes, so just letting everybody know, reminding everybody. Um, as far as, um, do you think it's necessary to read all the warrant articles or just the addition? Just highlight the new ones. All right, so as far as the additions go, and I may need some help on this, there there is a placeholder for an HVAC system at the Chickering School, mm -hmm. and I believe that was new. That's since, correct. since I, the last time. I believe I'm no, I'm sorry. I'm assuming that this was a, came to the capital budget and was right. broken out as a special article. Right. So I just put on a placeholder at your request. Yeah, and I um, appreciate that. Yeah, and I just need to get more information. 
from capital budget and also from okay. the Dover School Committee on exactly what they're seeking. So okay. All right. Get the wording properly. All right. Do you need that by tomorrow at one? Or? Oh no. no. Okay. This is no. just a subject. List. Okay. All right. All right. And um, I see that there's a citizen's petition that I believe is new to fund and authorize the selectmen to to engage a wildlife. Habitat study? That is a pending petition. We have not received it yet, but we okay. we think we will by one o'clock tomorrow. Yes. Okay. And that is a new item as well. That is brand new. That okay. just um, developed today. All right. And there's also a citizen's petition on there from the Friends of the Dover Greenway, and it mirrors last year's language. For the Grand Trail article, identically, that has been um, submitted and certified by the town clerk. Okay. I think that's it. Um, well, the page you throw isn't that? That, that was there. That was, was there. Last okay. time. Yeah, and also. Um, we want to have some generic I, I know this language uh, for the town to access the landfill okay. and um, also generic language on net metering agreements so that would not just be for this particular net okay. metering but in the future so that the board selectmen wouldn't have to keep coming back. Mm -hmm. And we did, I do remember, we, we spoke to the town council about that, and they said that that was something that we were one of the few towns that didn't have that bylaw changed currently. Mm -hmm. Because we did ask how other towns were able to enter into net metering arrangements without going back to town meeting. Mm -hmm. so and I believe council can supply us with um, the bylaw cha changes that other towns have adopted. Yes. All right. Yes. Regarding uh, 22, the citizens' petition, the potential 22 for citizens' petition, would a petition come with? Are you okay? <laughs> <laughs> uh, if a would a, if a petition comes to us, is the petition required to have an amount of money attached to it that they would be seeking? Not in the um, warrant article. That would be in the motion. In the motion. Yes. And that's, that's it. And that's a really good question because I think a, a lot of times it, it's not in the warrant language. Yeah. And that's the most important fact. And people want to know what, what is it going to cost. Mm -hmm. I, I do believe that the Beach um, the Dover Group has a particular environmental specialist in mind who could, of course, it would be the, to the board's discretion if this pass to select if they so choose, um, if they so choose a, a wildlife expert, but if they are thinking of someone, they may be able to get a cost estimate and we might also be able to ask Paul McManus right. uh, because he performed at the the environmental mm -hmm. study right. over at 46 He did, he did. So we have some actual concrete numbers for a different kind of project. So. Yeah, but not for this scope. Right. No. <coughs> not mm -hmm. I, I would just be mindful of trying to determine the difference for us to trying to determine the difference of a wildlife specialist, a habitat specialist, a specialist for the specialist of the specialist. I think that's a... We, 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 yeah, we, we discussed that a little bit today with the... Um, with, um, with the specialist? <laughs> well, no. With the, with the, I have to say that the... Uh, uh, the true Okay. So one one of the questions I I had is just scanning this briefly. It could potentially be an extremely long town meeting. There's a lot of potentially very, for lack of a better word, needy items on the agenda, um, or for for town meeting. 
can do after the warrant closes, can we at that point in time look about look at placement, or is that a yes, decision absolutely. we have to make now? No. Okay. Um, so this is just an order. This is a list. This oh, is yes. a menu. Oh, okay. This is just okay. to update you and say this. This is almost everything, but people have until one o'clock tomorrow. For right. Okay. Citizens, and usually on the selection schedule for this next meeting, at which you get your first review of the draft warrant. You would order and assign special articles if you so choose. Okay, all right. Right, because we should think a little bit maybe on our own about placement and, you know, does it make sense to have all these meaty articles boom, 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 boom one after another, or does it make sense to spread them out a little bit? So. Because I think, right? Because I think there's there's going to be a lot of discussion on, on many of these items, and and also I would um, strongly recommend to any citizen petition groups to be thinking about getting their the material out behind their warrant articles, and even even having perhaps open hearings to to educate um, you know citizens of Dover to to these to these items as well as perhaps right. trying to get on a Warren committee agenda mm -hmm. especially if there are funds involved that that the town will need to um, to fund it's really important to get the Warren committee involved right now to understand and ask the questions and not wait until oh, wait. the open hearing. Mm -hmm. Because by then it's almost too late. Mm -hmm. I think that's right. Um, I know that friends of the Dover Green Mayor have requested um, coming to a Selectman's meeting in the near future to discuss the article and also discuss whether or not the uh, question um, of a rail trail could be put on the town election ballot. Okay. So that, that request came simultaneous okay. today. All right. right. They're, they're um, drafting and taking away their citizens' petition for signatures. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you for that information. Could be a busy few months. And this really may be a 2 night 10 meeting. Well, you know, one of the things that I appreciate very much about this year compared with last year is that we do have the next three months to really focus on this work right, right. there right. instead of having to worry about weather and special town meetings and single issues around minute. Oh, that's a good point. And so we right. I really, forgot about that you know, last year. This is, right. This almost in some way feels luxurious to me to have three months to deal with this. <laughs> Greater than you think, though. I know. Yeah. It goes fast. Today I, is January 19th. I know. Mm -hmm. It's quick. Yeah. Open hearings March 20th. Right. So it's two months away. Right. 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 All right. Well, thank you very much mm -hmm. for putting the list together. The, the next item on the agenda is something near and dear to me. It was a request made by Long Range Planning. And just to remind everybody, the last 15 months, I think, Long Range Planning was working towards the town becoming a green community and did a phenomenal job leading the charge to the extent of members were loading data into the system for the energy reduction plan that we submitted to the state, to the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. And now, um, after sitting back and admiring their work, Long Range Planning has realized that they're very, um, they would very much like a new charge as a committee after, after, um, after the green communities, they're extremely energized and, you know, again, did a phenomenal job really leading the town. And we had talked um, last year sometime, especially after the results of the Springdale study committee came out, that there were really three things that the town should be looking at. With 
to, to help us better understand what the future of Dover looks like from a development or, or non-development perspective. And those three items were to take a look at zoning as our current zoning bylaws you know see if there are things we should be doing to update those to try and make them friendlier for potentially environmentally friendly development uh, we also recognized then and I think the drought this summer brought that even more to the forefront that water is an issue and how how all the evidence we had that Springdale used was anecdotal. And then the third issue that also needs to be addressed is affordable housing. You know, what does affordable housing mean? Are there things Dover potentially could be doing? But not even that, to take a step back and answer some of the questions that were asked. What happened to the Dover Housing Partnership? What's happened to the few affordable units that we do have in town? And while, as we all know, the planning board is looking at zoning, the Board of Health has um, put together a committee that's looking at water, and I thought what would make sense is to right now have long-range planning um, look into affordable housing, um, you know, see where we are, are the things we can potentially be doing, with the idea that next year after all these committees have have put together plans you almost have to have these three silos come together so i would like you know my thought was to make that the charge for long-range planning and um, ask them to look at where we are what what happened to some of the infrastructure we had, and then maybe take a look at what what other towns have done, with the idea that at a at a later date these three silos would come together to begin to to put together a plan for you know what we should be doing with respect to. It would be nice to hear, that, right. Mr. Clark. Mr. Clark. Just say yes, Mrs. Hunter. That was a wonderful idea. I fully I, I, support I, 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 you. I totally agree with you. But, but, I, but I would like to add one other charge for that. Okay. Uh, the Charles River School has already brought before both the building inspector and the board of health a uh, proposal which now has gone public. Uh, but the details in the publication aren't as clear uh, to indicate what could be a dramatic change to the appearance of the town center. And also impacts on the, the traffic situation in the town and also raises some questions as, that the Board of Health specifically has to deal with relating to what is the result if they increase their enrollment, the number of teachers, the number of other personnel present in a new building uh, in regards to Board of Health issues. And there are a number of different topics that come out of the likelihood that they will request permitting to put into place a building of totally different appearance from all other buildings in the town center. And with an increased enrollment. And I don't think, I can't think of any other committee that might conceivably address these various topics. It's not a short term issue because if a building like that is in fact completed and occupied, uh, the impact is long range. It, it's not just as, oh, well, we have more students, as you can well imagine. Um, and I, I would like that the long range planning committee, if not some other board, uh, have the opportunity to think through the implications of this. Because otherwise, 
this process will be one where we will get credits. Uh, we'll look at them, the structure will be looked at, the police department will look at traffic, but actually probably has not that much control over it, frankly. Uh, you can't prevent them from having more faults in there. But they are, if you're not aware of it, the really building's going to be blocked onto the existing, what I refer to as the Betty Dow building. Before we look, uh, let, let, I apologize, let me interrupt you. Um, it's my understanding, and I was present at the meeting from the planning board's perspective, that the Charles River School has done an extensive amount of preparation. Exactly. A, an extensive amount of conversations have already existed between Charles River and the planning board. At the, at the last planning board meeting of November, uh, that I attended, it was clear to the planning board that a lot of the things that you bring up, all very good points, valid, um, I'm sure have been put through some type of preliminary conversation with the planning board. So I think a lot of the things that you're bringing up are, have been specifically that you're bringing up with the example of the Charles River School, have been addressed by the planning board, certainly have been thought through to the point of how they will be presented to the planning board as this process develops. So, and again, I apologize for interrupting, but I, I think that some of the things that, that, that we want to be mindful of is letting the boards that have the that have the ability to vet these projects, let them do that first and foremost if there are things that are outside of their their jurisdiction need to be addressed, we should address those. But my only concern was that each board has a silo yes. view of a development like this. So. Which is which is specifically done so that you don't encumber somebody else's view, if you will, of that particular project. So what is specific to one board should be specific to that board and allow that board to do what they do as it pertains to that project. I think what we want to be very careful of, very mindful of, is that we don't drift into somebody else's jurisdiction and allow something to be bogged down or encumbered because of somebody's position on something. I, I mean, I'm not speaking from the position, I'm just looking at when you have, uh, if it is the planning board that has the ability to address these types of topics, uh, some of these topics, and some of them are very specific to a or other, but the overall view of the town center, uh, and thought that that was more in the long range planning. No, it's definitely for the you. you you said mm -hmm. what I was going to say, but it definitely, but <laughs> and thank you, well as you, you said it better. <laughs> um, but, you know, that's what I, I was going to, um, I know the planning board is, is looking into this, and I will, I will touch base with Mark Sorrow, the chair, and make sure that all of these issues are addressed. But I know from some side conversations with them that they recognize fully um, that the Charles River School is in the center of town. And I believe the Charles River School is cognizant of this as well. Mm -hmm. And they, they're working very hard with the architects and the planning board to ensure that they're not going to change mm -hmm. the look and feel. But I will, I will confirm that for you. So. Well, also the operational aspects of the town. Right. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Everything from traffic to the aesthetics of the building is going to be vetted by the planning board. And, and it's imperative to the to the town that it doesn't really change the feel of the town mm -hmm. center. Like you can't have this huge modern building in there. It just wouldn't work. The, there are available to anybody at, at I believe whenever the school is open, they have renderings of what the buildings will look like. Um, they have gone to great extent to make them look very much like the other buildings on campus. They've gone to the to the extent of, and again, I'm just giving you what I know from the presentation they made of the, to the planning board. 
So they have thought carefully. And I think you would agree that Carol Lisbon, who is chairing that particular board for the school, would have a very good understanding of what needs she, to be done. You know, it would be a rigorous review. It's an important point because she has recused herself from voting. Sure. But, you, you know, I think your comments are really valid, and I think a lot of citizens are going to begin to hear about this construction um, project. So maybe we should ask the Charles River School to come to one of our meetings mm -hmm. and make a presentation because they are televised and people do watch them. Mm -hmm. So if you think that's a good idea, we could we could ask them to come and you know, maybe cut down on their sure. on their presentation that they made to the planning board, but just give a really high level overview of of their plans and what their renderings look like today. I also wanted to add, they did such a beautiful job on the wetlands okay. open classroom that opened in September, I believe. And um, I think it's indicative of the depth that they go to, to be sure that they are the best kinds of citizens here in Dover. And I think they take their location, being at the heart of the center of Dover, I think they take that very seriously. Right. But I appreciate you raising the questions. Thank you. Um, Candace, that's very, very well said. And, and I do, Jerry, I, I do just want to be mindful that, that your position and your comments are, are greatly appreciated by, by me as it pertains to, 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 to this, particular, um, this particular project. But I do think that the board has to be mindful of the many different types of projects that come before it. And I also don't want to make a precedent of giving the, the long range planning committee something that would, would lead itself to being an ongoing process. And I think building this particular case, I view it as a building project is specific to the planning board. And maybe there are parts of it that might fall under the scope. Well, the reason I raised it was because some years ago, the long range planning committee was the first board that focus of the discussion of what Dover would look like. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. And, and the first page of that, that report was, it's their hope that in 25 years or 35 years or whatever it was, that Dover looks exactly the same as it did at the time of that, that report, which we all think is critically important. So, thank you. Yep. Really appreciate your comments as always. So the next item on our agenda is the acceptance of a gift. Should I? S yep, okay. for the Park and Rec Commission. And the gift is one day of tree work at the Carroll Park Top Lot. And it's being donated by Hartney Graymont. And the approximate amount or value of, of the service is $2,800. That's great. How did this come to be? Do we know? Uh, got a call this afternoon from Mr. McCavish, the director of Park and Rec, saying they had to do this tree work. They got Hardy and Grandma out, and they just made the offer based on being a good customer. You know, we're willing to, to pay for one day and work for two. What do we do? I said, it sounds like a gift to me. Right. Get it in. It's left me meeting tonight. And mm -hmm. Paperwork's all in place. Mm -hmm. We'll go for it. Well, I'd like to thank Hartney Graymont for the generosity. Do you need a motion to accept this? I certainly do. So will we accept this generous donation? Oh, second. $800. All in favor? Aye. Thank you. And this, this evening we have um, an appointment to make. It's next on our agenda. And um, I would like to appoint Mr. Jay Hughes to the Board of Fire Engineers. As everybody is aware, Mr. Hughes is retired as um, the Chief of the Fire Department this summer. Is that correct? June. June. In June. And um, we have had some conversations, and um, I spoke some to the current members of the Board of Engineers, and they felt that Mr. Hughes' expertise would really assist them as a board. And he um, and Mr. Hughes felt that 
was generous enough to accept the appointment. So um, with that, I would like to make a motion to appoint Mr. Hughes to the Board of Engineers, Fire Engineers. Mm -hmm. Is it a one year or three year? Three year, three -year. Three -year term. Seconded. Mm -hmm. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And thank you, Mr. Hughes. Mm -hmm. Mr. J. Hughes, not Mr. Fred Hughes. Not yet. Is there going to be a test in terms of how many Hughes? <laughs> <laughs> I hope not. This is a signature. Well, and I'm going to officially accept the gift. Just yeah. put Robin's in. Okay. There we go. Moving right along, we have minutes from our December 19th meeting and as well as our January 5th meeting. So we'll do the December 19th meeting first. And um, I guess we had the Eversource poll petition. We talked about the, um, the advisory services for Landvest. That was right, really cool. Right, right. Mm -hmm. um, we talked about renewing the chief of police's contract. Mm -hmm. We reviewed certain operating budgets. We appointed the new collection assistant in the treasurer's office. Mm -hmm. okay. I'm, I'm assuming this pink sword did work. She did. Okay. Yes, and she's she's doing very well. Okay. She's okay, great. And we did the um, we approved the new IRS standards for mileage reimbursement. We executed the bond anticipation notes, and we accepted a grant to the Board of Health. Mm -hmm. And a grant for the Dover Cultural Commission. So I don't have any changes. Mm -hmm. Nor do I. I move that we accept the minutes as presented. Mm -hmm. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Then the... Um, January 5th minutes, we appointed a short-term, temporary, part-time police officer, I guess. A special a police special officer. Police officer. A special police officers work on weekends. Right. That's why they're special. <laughs> <laughs> We reviewed the list of Warren articles. We um, considered and waived the um, registered voter requirement for appointments of a candidate to a committee. And we made some appointments. And we had some citizens in who, who wanted an update on the MBTA lease negotiation, mm -hmm. and we provided those to them. I uh, move that we accept the minutes as presented. Okay, second. second. Okay. Okay. You second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. There being no citizens, <laughs> other than the three of us, does anybody have a citizen comment? Our reporter. Are you a citizen? Mm -hmm. No. Mm -hmm. Well, welcome back. Mm -hmm. I, I, I think the one comment I would like to make is I, once again, would like to remind people that the warrant, our warrant closes at 1 p.m. tomorrow, mm -hmm. Friday, January the 20th. And if there are no further comments, I make a motion to adjourn the meeting. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Good night, everyone. Mm -hmm. Good night.